Welcome to Massive Beards. My name is Matt. We do the beer stuff here today. We're doing a little bit of Alpine Beer Company. Their duet. Um, I've never had this beer. And this is kind of like an old school classic. Um, one of the kind of like um, old school gotta haves. Kind of like in the form of Fuzzy Baby Ducks Gandhi Bot kind of stuff. A little bit of you know, second fiddly. But it was more of a West Coasty thing. Um, just didn't really get it around here. Might have had it in some passing at a, at a share or something along those lines. But um, a marketing company that does, you know, Green Flash, Alpine, a bunch of those companies sent off a box and this was in there. Now, what is Duet? A Duet is an India Palo coming at 7% alcohol by volume. On the back here, we have story time. It says, uh, founded um, as a small town brewery with passion for great beer and thirst for adventure, Alpine Company has been um, crafting high quality ales since 1999, known as the home of pure happiness. People have traveled from near and far to get a hold of our special brews. Now you can bring home a little taste of happiness from Alpine. Duet all night long. Everybody's favorite IPA, this Alpine masterpiece, features pine citrus and cedar notes from a harmonious blend of Simcoe and Amarillo. Um, this is Best Buy 112422. Today is the first of. Well, no, the 5th of January, 2023. Out of date, but they sent this to me. It was out of date when I got it, so I'm still going to drink it. We'll see what's what. Could be wrong dating. Could be an old can. I don't know, but I'm going to review it anyway. Um, so we'll see what's what. It's a West Coasty, so it should hold up decently over time. Label is, I'm not going to sit here and kind of wax poetic about how great this is, but there's something about this label I do dig. The classicness. It reminds me kind of like a a Schlitz can or something like that to a certain extent, but in a crafty kind of way. So I do not hate it. As far as the beer goes, it looks like a soft little hazy West Coasty. You know, um, you're talking about traditional West Coasty, it'd be a bit clearer than that. But yeah, that amber kind of color you come to expect with a West Coast IPA. You have that index finger, fluffy, creamy head. Let's see what the nose holds. I mean, you get that classic piney kind of resininess that you come to expect from like a West Coast kind of IPA, but it's a little bit more sweeter, a little bit more fruity um, than I would expect for a classic West Coasty. It has these nice kind of mango. Everything here has a candy touch to it, that kind of caramel malt, kind of crystal malt thing that tends to happen uh, with these West Coast beers, um, especially ones that are sweeter like this that I don't think is going to be ultra dry. You get this candy kind of thing. So everything when you talk about fruit here, you're talking about stone fruit, you're talking about a mango thing, you're talking about those kind of fruits that are a bit more candied, a bit more hard candy, kind of uh, chewy kind of um, confectionery kind of candy as opposed to a real fruitiness. There is that tiny characteristic to it, which gets bigger while that head kind of dissipates a bit, but it comes off as like a mix of new school and old school. Let's just dive in. Cheers, y'all. Yeah, it leans way more old school, West Coast, than I thought it would be. The sweetness is there, but it does come off as a super high elevated mall sweetness. It's definitely like um, a crystal caramel malty thing. Nothing too crazy. You're not getting up to like um, the other hop, the other malt I was going to mention. <laughs> um, but it has this nice kind of big pininess with a touch of resinous to it. That candied, fruity portion of the show really doesn't come off because of that lack of uber sweetness in there. Even though it is sweet, it doesn't come off as a candy super candy kind of sweetness it's more the gummy candy than the hard candy kind of thing but an under sweetened kind of way like peach ringy to a certain extent but not nearly as sweet um but it really is that kind of uh that grapefruit stone fruit kind of combination with a little bit of mango kind of vibes going on nothing too crazy again from the sweetness scale but it comes off that way in a fruit sense of things while it does have this nice kind of pininess that just touches resinous kind of characteristic in a relatively clean finish. You know, looking at something that hazy, expected to be have a little bit more mouthfeel, have it be a little bit more fluffy or dense. And while it's not going to be confused with squeaky clean, like some classic West Coast IPAs, that bitterness, a decent drying finish, doesn't come off nearly as sweet. It's a fun beer. It's a tasty beer. A beer I want to rip one, a bunch of. Let's put it that way. I mean, it is. What is it, 7%? 7% alcohol by volume. Comes off a little bit lower than that. So it's something that I think I could 
throw in the mix and drink a few throughout the night. Have one of these, have a new school, have one of these, have a porter. It's kind of that beer that you kind of play in between your other beers in a very tasty way. Nice little lacing on the glass there. And honestly, a really, really well-made beer. Yeah. Classic West Coastness with a nice dollop of new school eastiness. Does not suck. There you go. I dig it. Is it one of the better West Coast IPAs I've had? It's like, yes. Is Mount Rushmore status? I don't know. Might be just outside of that, but it's worthy being towards the top. Let's put it that way. Um, valued availability on this. I assume it's at a decent price point. You know, Alpine, Green Flash, they were bought by, was it the kid who bought them? Canarchy or something like that? I forget who purchased them, but they're they're definitely more of a uh, kind of a widely distributed um, beer now. So I assume you get a decent price point on these. And let's talk about, about that. Excuse me. Have you had this beer? Have you had? What did you pay for it? Um, where'd you get it? And have you had this iteration? Um, like I said, even with this having a bit of an older date on it, it still comes off quite nice. Have you had newer ones? What are your thoughts on Alpine now, as opposed to even Alpine later, before they were sold off, purchased the whole nine? Have you been to the brewery? Let's talk about it down there. So there you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying one, one of these Alpine jams right now. Hope to see you next time. Cheers, y'all.